So, with gratitude for his leadership and vision, and with admiration for his unwavering determination to rebuild America and restore a nation of opportunity and prosperity, it is now my high honor and distinct privilege to introduce to you the President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. I really appreciate everything, and I appreciate you being here. Uh, but I especially want to thank Secretary Elaine Chao, Leader Kevin McCarthy. Thank you, Kevin. Chairman Bill Schuster. Thank you very much, Bill. And all the members of Congress, we have many of them here today, for joining us as we prepare to enter a great new era in American aviation. It's about time, too, I can tell you. But before discussing our plans to modernize air travel, I want to provide an update on our efforts to fix and modernize vital services for our veterans, our great, great veterans who we all love. For decades, the federal government has struggled to accomplish something that should be very, very simple, seamlessly transferring a veteran's medical records from the Defense Department to the veterans groups and to the VA. In recent years, it has taken not just days or weeks, but many months for the records to follow the veteran. This has caused massive problems for our veterans. I'm very proud to say that we are finally taking steps to solve this situation once and for all. Secretary Shulkin announced this morning that the VA will announce and modernize its medical records to use the same system as the Department of Defense. No more complications. The records will now be able to follow the veteran when they leave service meaning faster, better, and far better quality care. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This is one of the biggest wins for our veterans in decades, and I congratulate Secretary Shulkin for making this very, very important decision. Thank you, Secretary. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. He's done a great job. Stand up, Secretary. Where is Secretary Shulkin? What a great job. Thank you. Of course, there is still much work to do, but for today's action, it shows the determined leadership and what it can accomplish. Great, great reform. So again, to David Shulkin, thank you to all of our veterans who have served this nation. A very, very special thank you. This is truly wonderful, really monumental reform. So important for our veterans, but it's just the beginning. We're here today to discuss another issue that has gone unsolved for far too long. For too many years, our country has tolerated unacceptable delays at the airport, long wait times on the tarmac, and a slowing of commerce and travel that costs us billions and billions of dollars in lost hours and lost dollars themselves. Today, we're proposing to take American air travel into the future, finally. Finally. Right? Finally. It's a long time. We're proposing reduced wait times, increased route efficiency, 
and far fewer delays. Our plan will get you where you need to go more quickly, more reliably, more affordably. And yes, for the first time in a long time, on time, we will launch this air travel revolution by modernizing the outdated system of air traffic control. It's about time. Since the early days of commercial air service, the federal government has owned and operated the United States air traffic control system. Yet, more than a half a century later, the government is still using much of the exact same outdated technology. At a time when every passenger has GPS technology in their pockets, our air traffic control system still runs on radar and ground-based radio systems that they don't even make anymore. They can't even fix anymore. And many controllers must use slips of paper to track our thousands and thousands of planes that are up in the air. Our air traffic control system was designed when roughly 100,000 people flew at our airports each year. We are now approaching nearly 1 billion passengers annually. The current system cannot keep up, hasn't been able to keep up for many years. It causes flight delays and crippling inefficiencies, costing our economy as much as $25 billion a year in economic out. We live in a modern age, yet our air traffic control system is stuck painfully in the past. The FAA has been trying to upgrade our nation's air traffic control system for a long period of years. But after billions and billions of tax dollars spent and the many years of delays, we're still stuck with an ancient, broken, antiquated, horrible system that doesn't work. Other than that, it's quite good. <laughs> the previous administration spent over $7 billion trying to upgrade the system and totally failed. Honestly, they didn't know what the hell they were doing. A total waste of money, $7 billion plus plus. It's time to join the future. That is why I'm proposing new principles to Congress for air traffic control reform, making flights quicker, safer, and more reliable. Crucially, these reforms are supported by air traffic controllers themselves. They're the ones that know the systems that they want. They know it better than anybody. And we have people that don't even call them in the past, but now we call them. I'm also proud to be joined today by passenger advocates, pilot unions, and leaders of airlines and cargo companies who strongly support our new framework and our bidding process. And we're bidding, ideally, to one great company. There'll be many bids, but one great company that can piece it all together. Not many companies all over the United States, like in the past, when they came time to piece it together, it didn't work. They were all different systems. We threw away billions and billions of dollars. I am very grateful that every former FAA chief and chief operating officers and three former transportation secretaries, Jim Burnley, Elizabeth Dole, and Mary Peters, stand with us today. Thank you. This is an incredible coalition for change all over the room. It's a coalition for change, the leaders of the industry. At its core, our new plan will dramatically improve America's air traffic control system by turning it over to a self-financing nonprofit organization. This new entity will not need taxpayer money, which is very shocking when people hear that. They don't hear that too often. Under this new plan, the Federal Aviation Administration will focus firmly on what it does best, safety, 
a separate nonprofit entity would be charged with ensuring route efficiency, timely service, and a long-awaited reduction in delays. Our plan will also maintain support for rural communities and small airports, including airfields used by our Air National Guard units. Great people. And very importantly, air traffic controllers will highly — and this will be highly valued. These are highly valued people. These are amazing people that know this system so well. And under our plan, they will have more financial security, professional opportunity, and far superior equipment — the best equipment anywhere in the world. There'll never be anything like what we're doing. And other systems are very good. I won't tell you the names of the country, but we have studied numerous countries, one in particular. They have a very, very good system. Ours is going to top it by a lot. Our incredible air traffic controllers keep us safe every day, even though they are forced to use this badly outdated system. That is why we want to give them access to capital markets and investors so they can obtain the best, newest, and safest technology available. And by the way, the new technology, and I've seen it, is incredible. If we adopt these changes, Americans can look forward to cheaper, faster, and safer travel, a future where 20 percent of a ticket price doesn't go to the government, and where you don't have to sit on a tarmac or circle for hours and hours over an airport, which is very dangerous also before you land. Dozens of countries have already made similar changes with terrific results, and we're going to top them, actually, by a long shot. Canada, as an example, modernized their air traffic control through a non-government organization about 20 years ago, and they have cut costs significantly, adopted cutting-edge technology, and handled 50 percent more traffic, and actually far more than that on a relative basis compared to us. A modern air traffic control system will make life better for all Americans who travel, ship, or fly. It will reduce cost and increase convenience for every American consumer. And these new efficiencies will produce a huge economic boost for the country and for the 1 in 14 American jobs that aviation supports. Today, we are taking the first important step to clearing the runway for more jobs, lower prices, and much, much, much better transportation. America is the nation that pioneered air travel. And with these reforms, we can once again lead the way far into the future. Our nation will move faster, fly higher, and soar proudly toward the next great chapter of American aviation. Thank you, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
You're watching the President of the United States, Donald Trump, in the East Room of the White House, signing directives after a speech announcing his administration will send to Congress legislation pushing to have air traffic control privatized. The President talking about pushing the United States into a new era of air safety and air security. You see the President there in the East Room. This part of his infrastructure agenda here. Let's talk about it in the room. Our Sarah Murray's in the East Room. We'll get to her in a moment, but here with us to share the reporting and insights on Inside Politics, the Atlantic's Molly Ball, Dan Balls of the Washington Post, Mano Raju of CNN, and Shannon Petty, piece of Bloomberg Politics. This part of the President's infrastructure agenda, but it's a tad odd, I guess, to see the President in the East Room uh, asking Congress to do something. This is, they need legislative approval to do this. Um, you're, it's something we were talking before the show about. This actually is something the President cares passionately about during the campaign. He even talked about his own pilot on his, on his Trump right. Organization plane, talking about how outdated the system is. From a presidential perspective, why is this important? Well, one, it's important to try and get this domestic agenda back on track, health care stalled in Congress, tax reform they can't come to an agreement on, so they don't have anything to talk about there, infrastructure, which, you know, is behind those other two, because to do anything substantial on infrastructure, as you said, you have to get Congress's approval on this, and you need their money. But it's some attempt to put a show of that we're trying to do something, we're trying to get some points on the board, and to the public, you know, now it, you know, they don't necessarily realize that uh, this is going to take congressional approval, and it's down the road. It, it shows that they're doing something domestically. And on the idea of selling to the public, the idea that we can make your, your flights will be on time, you will sit on tarmacs less, you'll sit in airports next. That's certainly, at least on the surface, something that would have broad appeal out in the country. The, the question is, you also lose 30,000 federal jobs under this, the proposal that this is modeled on, legislation, Republican legislation in Congress. And now that you have a Republican president and a Republican Congress, the president is hoping he can get this through, uh, but the Republicans had this stall on them before when they tried. Yeah, they did. And they need Democratic support, excuse me. Um, this is one of the things, infrastructure largely, at the beginning of this administration, they thought they could get democratic support. But this is, so far, you're seeing a fair amount of resistance from Democrats. Chuck Schumer, the top Democratic leader, has been criticizing this proposal today because it does not do what the Democrats want, which is to spend a lot more money on infrastructure programs, a lot like the stimulus from 2009. This talks about public-private partnerships, things that uh, are not built around federal spending, and that may make it harder to get approved through Congress. And the president's going to go on the road this week as well. He's going to go to the Cincinnati area to, again, talk infrastructure. He's going to talk about, you know, where rivers come together at key points in the United States. Uh, decaying roads, decaying bridges, decaying ports. Uh, the president making the case, as he did there about FAA, he said $25 billion cost to the economy, the outdated air traffic control system. He'll make the same case on the road. Uh, but we're also told the actual details of the bigger multi-billion dollar infrastructure plan are weeks, if not months, away. Uh, so what is the president doing here? Well, that's the thing. It's a stretch to even call this an infrastructure plan. It's more cor uh, correct to my eyes to call it a, a privatization plan because when the president spoke about infrastructure on the campaign trail, he did talk about the crumbling roads and bridges and airports, and this doesn't build those things. Now, that may be a net benefit for travelers. It may be an improvement to the air traffic infrastructure, but it's not building things. You had the vice president introduce the president as a builder. He, you're not building roads and bridges with this. You're not creating those blue collar jobs that make an infrastructure plan appealing and popular to a lot of people. Uh, and I think the reason is that uh, you've got to get this plan through Congress. Republicans right. in Congress are more likely to be on board with something that essentially constitutes deregulation, has been sought by a major industry, in this case the airlines, uh, rather than a big building project. But if you're the President of the United States, you're talking about something that you think would benefit the economy, something that is personal to you, uh, as opposed to other things that we're going to talk about later in the program, uh, that many around the president think they would prefer the president to stop talking about those things and actually get out in the country and get even, even events in Washington and talk about things that would contribute to the economy, that would at least spark debates about policy, not Russia, not Twitter. Well, we know he's always cared about infrastructure issues. I mean, he, he, it's one of the few things he, you know, volunteered. I mean, I believe, as I recall, on, even on election night, he mentioned infrastructure projects. So it's been kind of a core principle of Donald Trump to, to want to be a builder, which he is. Um, this is something that is has been going on for some time. I mean, there, it's not as though this is a brand new idea. The government has been trying to modernize this system. It's been very slow and very cumbersome. And it may be, in Donald Trump's mind, the best way to jumpstart this or to get it finally finished is to take it out of the hands of the government, put it in, in private sector hands. Quick break here. You just saw the president in the East Room when we come back before.